Think back to earlier times in world history. Think about ancient Rome or the great African kingdoms, Ghana, Mali, and Songhai, or even the Ming Dynasty or feudalism. And consider the lifestyles of the people. Whether it's 500 or 1600, changes in the way people lived developed very slowly over the course of hundreds of years. But when you consider 1800 versus today, the differences in lifestyle are astonishing. We went from manufactured goods and electricity to planes, trains, automobiles, and ultimately spaceships, computers, and cell phones in a relatively short span of time. Why? Well, these and other powerful developments in modern world history trace their roots to the Industrial Revolution. Now, I would like you to commit to memory the definition of the Industrial Revolution. This is the series of events that initiated a great many changes in life and work and politics and economics that we'll be studying this year. In just a few years, this shift caused the rise of these industrial towns and eventually what we know as cities. Now, the Industrial Revolution and its many technological inventions were preceded by a simple device called the Flying Shuttle. To understand why this invention was so revolutionary, first take a look at the traditional way of weaving. In this video I shot while chaperoning an elementary school field trip to the Alden House in Duxbury. That thing she was holding is the shuttle, and as she said, you could only weave a piece of cloth that was as wide as your arm length. And as she also said, it was a full body workout. The flying shuttle was moved across the loom by a lever, and thus one operator could weave cloth that was very, very wide, and they could weave cloth quickly and much more easily. This was fabulous except for one thing. The weavers started weaving all the available threads much faster than spinners could spin it. So the race was on to invent something that could increase the production of the spinning wheel. The first invention of the Industrial Revolution was the spinning jenny in 1764. It was a spinning wheel with eight spindles instead of just one and could produce eight spools of thread with the same effort it took to produce one spool. Eventually more spindles were added as you can see in this model in this picture. The problem, as you might imagine, is that the power of the person spinning is diluted so the result would be threads that were weaker and coarser than with a traditional spinning wheel. The next invention improved thread quality by powering the spinning wheel with water, rapidly moving river water. This was the 1769 invention called the water frame that was patented by Richard Arkwright. Wonderfully strong and straight threads were produced, but only one at a time. In 1779, Samuel Crompton combined the two inventions and created the spinning mule, which was powered by water and produced many threads at a time. All of these machines were invented in Britain. And a problem they all shared was that they were very large, too large for the corner of a person's house where the traditional spinning wheel was kept and used. In addition, the water frame and spinning mule could only work near a rapidly moving river, and so special places were built to house the machines. Thus, the factory, the place where workers go to work with machines, was born. So we now know that the Industrial Revolution began with the cloth making or textile industry. But as I end this presentation, I'd like you to consider these questions we'll address in class. First, why the textile industry? And second, why did the Industrial Revolution start in Britain in 1764 and not some other place at an earlier or later date?